Now let's look at a concept we call suppression. Let's imagine now that there is a relationship between x1 and x2, and there's a relationship between x1 and y, but there's no relationship between x2 and y. This is a new situation for us, right? So here, if we're going to draw this out, y is predicted by x1. y is not predicted by x2, but x1 is. There's a relationship here. Okay, so what's this ha what happens when this goes on? Well, first of all, let's look at our equation for r squared. Well, this just stays r squared y1 plus 0 minus also 0, right? Because here r y2 goes to 0 all over 1 minus r squared 1, 2. Got it. Now, here's a thing, though. Before... When there was, if, if we assumed bivariate correlation, right? So x1 is predicting y, x2 isn't. So before we talked about this in the bivariate correlation case, right? Where x2 is out here and doesn't mean anything. In that case, the denominator here is 1. And in that case, if this is denominator is 1, then r squared is equal to just the square of those relationships. But now, in this case, this has a value that's not 0, which means that this whole value is going to be something else. It's actually going to be less than 1, which means that the equation r squared here is going to be greater than the correlation between 1 and y. It's actually going to explain more. This, Even though x2 here doesn't explain any additional variance in y, there's still an increase in r squared by incorporating that. And why is that? It's because this is what we call suppressing all of the irrelevant, or at least some of the irrelevant, variance in x1. So now r squared, the percentage of variance explained, is the percentage of variance explained by the part of x1 that's interesting, not by all of x1 divided by the total variance that the total variance that exists. This is then what we call a suppressor variable, uh, or sometimes we call it a, a confound, right? This is something that we might include in our regression equation to make it more explanatory than just our bivariate regression, even though it independently does not predict anything about our outcome variable. An example, right, and usually this is because this is related to this other one, but we want to be able to ignore how these two are related. So what, what's a real-world example? I know that's a little confusing. What's a real-world example? Um, let's say that I was doing a, uh, I was doing a test, uh, and I was doing a test about your ability to accomplish a task, right? And so I had you read something, and then you had to accomplish a task based on the instructions that you read. But it turns out I don't really care. I know that in the real world where this job actually takes place, that you won't actually have to read. You'll be told what to do. But in my testing situation, I need, to, I need you to read that, right? Because I'm testing 100 people at one time. So reading ability then is not predictive of job performance and I don't care about it. But it's gonna be included here as, I re, as I'm asking you to read the instructions. So I may give you a separate test of reading ability. And then by giving you that separate test of reading ability, I'm taking out the part of X1, the part of your ability to read and understand, to understand what you're supposed to do, that's explained by just your reading ability. Because all I care about is your ability to understand whether I tell it to you or read it to you, right? And here's the tell it to you part. Here's the read it to you part. I can partial that out. I can control for it. I can suppress it by including this second variable, and I get a better prediction of why my outcome variable by including, including that control variable. So here's the bottom line here. Number one, sometimes we want to include suppressors. Sometimes we want to include what we call, and when we do, we call these confounds. Variables that are related to our predictors that we don't want included in our final prediction of the outcome. That's the first lesson here. The other part here is that when our beta weight in our regression coefficient 
is something other than r squared, then we have some interpretation to do. Then we have a similar, then, or, then we, excuse me, if it's something other than r, if our beta weight is unequal to r between y and 1, or y and whatever the x variable is, then we have some sort of collinearity. Some sort of collinearity among our independent variables. And that can make it weird in how we interpret them. So we're going to talk about that when we talk about multicollinearity. But just be aware that this suppression is going on, and sometimes we design it right in.